Hello folks, Chad Stanton here, a professional woodworker of almost 25 years, sharing my experiences with you. Now today's video, I'm continuing in on the series that I'm doing of building a 17th century style joint stool using just hand tools. Now in the previous videos, I did how to make the leg and how I did the mortises. Now if you didn't see that, don't worry, I have a link to those videos down below in the description. Today's video, I'm going to show you how I made the tenon. Now, I do have to say that in this video, uh, because I'm focusing just on making the joint stool, I do show you only one method for making the tenon. And as we know, there's a variety of ways of doing it. But stick around because towards the end, I'm going to give you a few more tips on how you can fine tune your tenons for that perfect fit. All right, without further ado, let's get back into the video. I'm making the joint stool. Let me bring you up to speed where I'm at. So I went ahead and I marked all the mortises with a letter and I'm doing the same to the pieces here. I'm putting the same letter designated to go to that mortise. I've already used, um, this is my Woodcraft or Wood River, I should say, Wood River uh, marking gauge to mark off for what will be the size of the tenon. I've also used my um, mortising marking gauge to mark off um, where I'll be cutting the cheeks to make the tenon. All right, so I'll get those out of the way. What I like to use is, uh, this is actually a chip carving knife by uh, FlexCut. Uh, I'm gonna make the mark from the marking gauge. I'm going to score it, make it a little bit deeper. And then what I like to do is I like to angle it and cut out a little trench. That's going to be for where the saw falls into it. So I'll do that on both sides. This is a, a saw by Pax, uh, it's a tenon cutting saw. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to uh, put my saw in here. Now I have a nice place for the saw to start. And then I'm going to saw down to uh, this, this first line. Okay, I made it there, uh, and I'll flip it over, do the other side. Okay, just uh, one small little tip I like to do when I'm sawing is uh, when my saw comes to an end, I always want to make sure that I'm pushing forward and then take it out. The reason for that is as this saw cuts through the wood, the little wood fibers on the end will blow out like that. If I saw and then pull back and take it out, what can happen sometimes is those little fibers that are sticking out will get uh, pulled back in. And then when you look to see if you made it to your line, uh, it'll give you the false impression that you didn't saw far enough. And then next thing you know, you'll put your saw and you'll, you'll cut past the line. Okay, so uh, now, typically, what you could do is put it in the vise and you would saw down uh, to make the cheek cut because we just made the shoulder cut. I could saw and make the cheek cut, but um, I do mine just a little bit different. Let me show you. What I like to do is uh, I'll take a chisel and I'm going to uh, break away some of this wood. Now, I'm doing just a little bit at first. I'm not putting my chisel right in on the line. Uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it's going to be a whole lot harder to remove the wood uh, taking a big piece like that. And let me show you the second reason now. So if you can see on there, this wood grain is running uh, down and out. All right, so it didn't split straight. It actually has um, 
split on an angle. Now this is okay, it's, it's splitting away from me. Uh, what I don't want it to do is to split going in and I don't want to uh, break out into what will actually be the tenon. So um, I'll remove some of this, flip it around and do the other side. Now I'm going to stop there. I'm not going to put my chisel into that line. Uh, there's a reason for that. And that is, I don't know if my mortise, when I did it with the chisel and cleaned it up inside, I don't know the actual true uh, width of the mortise right now. So I want to make sure that I leave this tenon a little fat and then sneak up on it meanwhile testing it in the fit um, in the mortise there. Alright, um, I don't know if you can see it on the camera but I can still see my pencil line. I have not um, split the wood down to that and also to uh, I have uh, thinner in the front thicker in the back so I need to take that down and what I do at this point is I'll use a uh, rabbit plane this happens to be one from Wood River so I can use this uh, to go on that again checking checking I don't go past the line, um, enough, but you notice that this Wood River one is only, uh, I think it's three quarter inches wide, so it doesn't get the whole tenon, so I have to make sure that I, I cover all of the tenon. Uh, but this is an old Stanley uh, 170, or Stanley 78, yeah, Stanley 78 rabbit plane. I like this and use it quite a bit, uh, mostly because you can see that that iron is like an inch and a half, I think wide, so. I, it, clearly, I still have more to take off, but I'm going to check it with the mortise now. And what I'll do is I'll stick Obviously, the, the mortise is smaller than what this current tenon is, but I would just want to make sure I got the fit right. So it's a little bit more there, a lot more on this side. So I'm going to keep uh, working at this, come back, and I'll, I'll show you the fit. So here's the fit that I want to show you. Now, <laughs> Once again, the, the, clearly the tenon is not cut down the size, but what I like to do is um, I like to stick the corner in it, make sure that it's you know snug, not too loose. Definitely don't want it too tight. If it's too tight and you try uh, pounding it in, you can uh, break this away. So you don't want to do that. If it's too loose, it's okay. It's not the end of the world because we're going to be using a, a draw bore fit later which will make it super tight but I check both both corners I want to check both corners to make sure that I have a little snug okay that looks good now what I do is I place the the apron on here I have it flush with the top of the leg and then I just sight down it and make a couple of marks where I need to cut the tenon to size now I would say in this instance that if your tenon is smaller than the mortise, uh, that's totally acceptable. In fact, I, th I think that's a good thing because when this board expands and contracts through the season, we want to make sure that that tenon has room in there to move. That's why I like to have the side-to-side -side fitting uh, snug versus the top to bottom fitting snug. Okay, and then this is nothing exciting to see. I'm just going to uh, 
cut those off with the saw and I'll show you how it fits together. I cut these off forming the full tenon. Uh, I already did do a test fit on it. It's a little, little snug. Um, I probably would put it in and just let it be, but um, I want to use this as an example for a little tip. So I know it's a little snug on the, either the tenon or somewhere in the mortise. So what I will do is I'll take uh, a wide, thick leaded pencil, and I'll make several um, thick lines on the tenon here. I'll do it on both sides. All right, now with that lead, uh, what I'm, what I'm going to be looking for is when I put this in the mortise and take it out, I'm going to be looking for that lead to smear and rub a little. The other thing I wanted to show you too is, uh, it's kind of hard for you to see, but where the tenon is meeting the leg here, it's, it's a nice fit, very flush. But on this side, I have ever so small of a gap. Uh, so what I'm going to have to do is uh, plane some off of, of this back edge. So let me first take the apron out. Oh yeah. So you can clearly see um, where it's smeared. So that is, you know, either a high spot on the tenon or something in the mortise that's doing it. Ah, and see, look, on this one here, it's smeared at the bottom. So a uh, nice little tip for figuring out where your tenon is getting stuck. All right, so I'm going to clean that up, which means uh, on this back edge, I'm going to have to plane a little bit on the, uh, on the shoulder and then uh, do another test fit, see how it looks again. And <laughs> once I get that done, I do that for all the upper aprons and then all the lower stretchers. So that's where I'm stopping the video today on making the joint stool, but I still have a few more tips to share with you. However, I'd like to ask a favor from you. If you appreciate the hard work and the information that I'm sharing with you, why well, I'd kindly ask you to click on that thanks tab. That's where you can leave a tip or a donation. However, if you're in a position where you're not able to donate, I totally understand. You could still help me out by sharing the video, liking the video, and leaving a comment because it does help with my overall YouTube channel and helps get me exposed to other and new viewers. <clears throat> All right, so let's wrap this up by me giving you a few more tips on getting those perfect fitting tenons. Another method you can use to check the consistency of the size of your tenon is to use a pair of uh, calipers. Now, I'm not actually using the calipers to measure the thickness. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm putting on the calipers on there. I pinch them down so it's flat. And then what I'm doing is I'm going to hold this up to the light and I'm going to sight down this. And what I'm looking for is uh, any light that's shining through where the calipers meet the tenon. So for example, if, if I cannot see any light in the front here, but there's a gap in the back, well then I know I have to shave a little down on this tenon. And it works really good. You can check the front and back, and then you can work it uh, up and down along the whole tenon. This really helps give you uh, a good idea of how you did when you're using that a shoulder plane on it. A shoulder plane can sometimes tend to rock or again like if you saw my wood river didn't cover the whole thickness of the tenon I might take a little bit off too much on one side or the other so the calipers uh, do a great job and they're, they're pretty low budget. Let me show you another tip now. The other method for sizing your tenon even all the way across is by using a router plane. Now this is uh, very accurate, but it's also going to require you to have another piece of wood 
that is the same thickness as what you're working on. In this case, this is just another one of the, the, the aprons that I have. So what I want to do is uh, I want uh, the two pieces to bridge, to bridge across the router plane here. Uh, and then I would move the iron down so it just starts scraping on the top of the tenon. That way I can move all the way across this and I know I have it perfectly flat and the same amount is coming off going all the way across. This piece, like I said, it helps bridge it because without it, it's real easy to tip. Now, this is a, uh, a fairly newer design for a router plane. Uh, this one was from Lee Valley. Uh, you don't have to buy a brand new one because these do get kind of pricey. Uh, for about half the price, you can probably get on eBay and buy an uh, older used one. This is a Stanley uh, 71 and a half, and essentially it does the exact same thing as the Lee Valley one. However, even these can um, still get a little bit pricey. Uh, you probably pay somewhere between 50 and 100 bucks for something like this. So if you want, you could actually even go ahead and make your own. Uh, this is one that I did some years ago. Uh, I do have a video on it. I'll put that in the link below. Now it doesn't have all the bells and whistles that these do with fine-tune adjusting, but it will do the job and it does the job rather nicely. So if you're interested in a router plane, uh, I would encourage you to add one to your collection. You definitely will use them. So this next video in the series of the joint stool, well, I'm going to show you how we're going to take this apron and we're going to dress it up by giving it a decorative profile. And this is called a Cupid's bow. Now I'm going to show you how to make this without using a bandsaw, of course, because that's a power tool. We're not going to use a bow saw and we're not going to use a coping saw. I think you're really going to find the method for doing this interesting. Plus, we'll go over some basic geometry and how I actually laid the profile out. So stay tuned for that. If you're new to our channel, we offer a free monthly newsletter with different contributors from all over the world giving you advice on either videos or articles and improving your woodworking. Also too, you can join us on a group page on Facebook where you can show off the work that you're doing in your shop or go there just for inspiration from others. And of course, as always, if you have a problem in your shop, need some help or advice, well, feel free to email me at woodshopintime at gmail.com because my whole goal of this show is to make you a better woodworker. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, well, keep on dancing.